Whether you think the Bible was written by the Holy Spirit or written by a man. Now, I'm the Christian, okay? So obviously I believe that the, the Bible was inspired by the Holy Spirit of God. Now, you might not believe that. You might think that it was written by a man. Okay, doesn't matter. Whether you think the original author was the Holy Spirit of God or a human being. When we are talking about the story of Abraham, we're talking about Abraham now. Obviously, it would have occurred to that author, be they the Holy Spirit or human being, that what God was asking Abraham to do in the killing of his son was crazy. You didn't read the story and you weren't the first person on earth to ever notice that, that God was asking Abraham to do something really, really out there. Really, really irrational and kind of nutso. Now, a lot of atheists talk about the story like they're the first person who noticed that. Obviously, the author noticed that, whether it was man or God. Let's just say for argument's sake it was man. Obviously, the person understood that. That it was a crazy thing for God to be asking Abraham to do. So we have to ask ourselves, what was, what was the author intending to convey? What idea was he intending to get across? Now, this is where we refer back to, briefly, to Kierkegaard, the Knight of Faith. If you are going to be a true knight of faith, in other words, a true warrior of the cross, and you are going to walk the, walk the Christian walk correctly, your obedience to God is going to be 100%. So when God says, do it, doesn't matter what he says to do. You do it. Period. End of discussion. And then, then you say, well, God is asking him to do something wrong. Abraham doesn't get to decide this is morally right or wrong. Now, what is the meaning in this? Okay? If I'm going to be a true warrior of the cross, I don't get to decide. God is the general. God gives the marching orders. I don't get to decide for myself. Is that right or wrong? Will that work? Will that won't work? It's just like a general soldier relationship. Do. Okay. Here you go. Do it. Okay. Now, before you think that this is all, this is all morally terrible, it's irrational, ah, ah, you're not understanding the context in which this idea is being put forth. This idea is being put forth under the assumption, I, the Christian, have sought God. The Bible has said, trust the Lord with all your heart and cling not to your own understanding. The Bible has also told me that God is completely and 100% trustworthy above, over and above my own self. Do you understand that? Think about what I just said. Now, I myself as the Christian have found that to be the case. You might not accept that yet. That's fine. But we're just talking about the, the moral argument being made. The moral argument being made, God says do it, you do it. You don't decide whether it's right or wrong, whether it's morally good or bad. It's not up to you to decide. Why? Because God can be trusted with, with uh, has absolute moral integrity, and you yourself cannot. You can trust God more than you can trust yourself. That's the argument in the Bible. That's what people don't get. The Bible is telling you to trust God completely and that he is trustworthy. Remember, no kid gets killed in the story. I read the story again. Yes, Abraham was commanded to kill a child. And yes, that's crazy. And yes, Abraham obeys. And technically that's crazy. Or he's a complete soldier of the faith. You decide. But nobody got killed in the story. Nobody winds up dying. So no crime was committed. Now, I have to... As, as the follower of the Lord, have to obey the commands of God over and above my own desires because the argument of the Bible is you yourself, your desires cannot be trusted. Now we go back to the Garden of Eden. Again, atheists don't understand the, the point of the story. People get hung up. Is it literally true? Is it literally two people? Who cares if it's literally true? Spiritually true. What is it trying to communicate? Put aside for the time being whether it's literally true, whether it was two people, Adam and Eve, Barney, 
going to dust the land, yada, yada. Who cares? Spiritually, what is trying to be communicated? What, what, what are they, what do they partake of? Which ruins the Eden, which ruins Eden. Think of it that way. It's not knowledge. Atheists have also distorted that. It's not knowledge. They're not kicked out of the garden for eating of the tree of knowledge. It's good and evil. That's the knowledge that's important. In other words, if human beings try to decide for themselves right from wrong, good from evil, they're going to mess everything up. Why? Because according to our nature, now again, original sin means in our human nature we are given over to corruption. doesn't mean we're evil, bad people. It means 99 times out of 100 we are going to choose what feels good, regardless of right or wrong. Now here is the part where we cannot be trusted morally. And you yourself cannot trust yourself morally. And I don't know if you've lived yourself at any period of time, but if you have and you're an adult and you're honest, you can't 100% trust yourself. If you say you can, you're wrong. You're not a wise person. Look deeper. No, you can't always trust yourself. I know for a fact that I can't always trust myself. The argument of the Bible is that God can always be trusted, 100% trustworthy, without exception. So if he says, do it, do it. If you say, I don't know, you can't trust you, but you can trust God. Because God's agenda is morally correct, always, even if you don't recognize it. Even if you don't recognize it. You say, but in the story of Abraham, he was telling him to do something morally wrong, but it never gets committed. The, moral, the morally terrible thing to do never actually occurs. So, human nature, you the person, are going to do what tastes good, what feels good to you. That is the mystery of the human heart. The heart does what it wants. The heart wants what it wants, period. Good or bad, right or wrong. You do what feels good. The problem comes in is that being a human being, you aren't content with just do what to do what just feels good to you. You try to justify it after the fact to make it morally correct, to declare what you have done because you have done it by impulse, felt good at the time. Ah, it felt good at the time. I don't know if it's right, but it sure felt good. That's fine. That's human beings. That's what we do. That's what we do. And if we could just live with that and say, yeah, I did it, I'm not sure if it's right, but it sure felt good, we wouldn't have a problem. But the problem comes because we try to justify ourselves after the fact. It's not enough for us to just have done it and say, you know, yeah, it wasn't necessarily right, but I sure had a good time doing it. We try to justify ourselves after the fact to make right and wrong obey our, us. Right and wrong doesn't budge. Right and wrong doesn't move. Right and wrong is eternal, unyielding. Right and wrong is the same yesterday, today, and forever, suspiciously like God. Suspiciously how we would declare the character of God. Now, I, I can already hear the bogus, I can, well, not bogus, I can already hear the atheist argue, the standard atheist arguments, yada, 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 Old Testament, this and that, God commands the genocide, blah, blah, blah. We'll get to that, okay? We'll get to that. We, we have not taken this into the realm of examining the Bible morally. We, the, the, the relationship that is being put forth, okay, the argument that is being made about Abraham is that that is the correct way to be. That is the type of relationship that you are supposed to have with God wherein... Um, that will lead to the promise of God. That is, that, is, that is how you become a knight of faith. You do what God says, period. You don't worry about whether it's right or wrong, good or bad. And the argument, of, further the argument of the Bible is that God can be trusted over and above you, more than you. So that's enough for now, and we'll get into, oh, you know, God is evil because he commanded genocide, Old Testament, blah, 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 blah. All right, uh, that's enough for now.